Hey everyone, we're back. We're back and we're in a new location. So this is Ask Finola How, at long last says you. And just to share with you, uh, we've done some changes if you haven't seen previous posts. And the changes are that we decided to merge a lot of social media accounts. And so we've moved from uh, at Make It Bite Size over on Instagram and other accounts. But anyway, over on Instagram, we've merged Make It Bite Size and this is Finola Howard. Does it me seem like the best place to have an Ask Finola How on the This Is Finola Howard Instagram? So here we are. So I'm glad you're with me today. And we actually have a ton of Ask Finola How questions that have been kept coming in over the last few weeks. And my apologies for not being here. I actually had foot surgery. So I did attempt to work at my normal pace, but it just didn't transpire. So I decided to rest in between my bouts of working and rest and heal. So I'm still, I've still got a way to go. Tomorrow is three weeks since my surgery and I'm very excited by it because it means I can move more freely. I can do a lot more with my swimming and walking and really get healthy. And that's a big one for me for this year. So let's return to Ask Finola How. And this is, would you believe, episode 61 in the Ask Finola How series. And a great question. Tough question for me today because, you know, I'm affected by this question. But let me share it with you. Okay, so... How do you find the right business mentor or guide and the right tribe? Okay. And the person, this entrepreneur went so far as to say, I've been burned by business coaches and mentors again. I spent a ton of money on online programs and one-to-one -one support, but the direction I was being pushed into never felt like me. And I never saw proper results from my investment. Is it just me? How can I be sure to find a pair of safe hands for myself and my business? You would be surprised, maybe you'd be unsurprised how often I hear this question and how often I end up working with people who are saying, I've just been burned by so many people before. And, and that's tough, you know, tough as somebody who's hearing that kind of information because, you know, I don't want the past to influence my future relationship with somebody. But I also have to accept that this is the case and we've got to work together to transform that relationship and that relationship with marketing or whatever your, the advice is. So let me give you my tuppence worth and my feelings about that question because there's a lot of key key questions in here. And I'll, I'll highlight them for you, right? One is finding the right business mentor or guide, also finding the right course or finding the right tribe. Same, same uh, answers address each of those challenges or each of those relationships. Uh, the the other question in here was about the direction I was pushed into never felt like me. And then the other one was, uh, how can I be sure to find a safe pair of hands? Let me just get stuck into it, okay? So the first thing I would say to you, we can't change the past, right? I don't want to address specific relationships with people. I just, I'm always interested in them. What do we do next? How do we move forward, right? So the first thing I would say to you is take a moment, okay? And take a moment and decide, okay, what is it that I'm trying to accomplish here? Like, well, first of all, actually realize this is an investment in your business. And it's an investment that's about not just in money, it's also in time. So if you're going to invest in your business and if you're going to engage with someone, whether it's a course or one-to-one -one work with somebody or investing in a community, think of it as an investment. And when you start to think of something as an investment, your mindset completely changes. You become much more proactive as opposed to passive about what's happening in your business. And this is the thing that I feel is really important for small business growth or any business who wants to go to the next level of their business. It's moving from this passive state to this active state. And it's moving into a conscious space of making choices that are right for your business, okay? And that is acknowledging, you start by acknowledging this is an investment. And the minute you do that, your brain automatically goes into, okay, well, this is an investment, therefore what must I do, okay? And then that brings me to my second point. If this is an investment in your business, 
the thing that you've got to realize is you've got to say to yourself, okay, well, what am I trying to accomplish here? What are my goals and objectives with this investment? So if I'm hiring a coach or if I'm hiring an accountant or a PR person or a web designer or a marketing person, what do I want to achieve here? Because when the scope is too broad, you're not being fair to yourself or the person that you're working with or the course that you signed up for by not having realistic expectations. So sit down and go, when I realize this is an investment, the second thing I want to figure out is what is it clearly that I want to accomplish here? And it's that thing of, and, and the danger is because we're so busy all the time doing, 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 we often don't take the time to say, okay, I need to take a conscious approach here. And I would say to you, write this down, what I want to accomplish here. And that is, if it's a copywriter, if it's a marketer, if it's a course, if it's a website, if it's an advisor to level up my business, which is very, you know, it's, it's a very specific thing, but it's also can be made much more tangible. So really identifying, I don't know maybe what it would take to level up my business, or maybe it's, well, what does leveling up mean for me tangibly? So it's taking that time to tangibly, it's like you're scoping it out, but I'm wanting you to scope out your expectations. Because when you scope out your expectations, then you can assess that in light of who you work with, okay? Or what you work with, okay? The next thing I'd say to you is, right, so you figured out I've had an investment here and then you've actually moved on and you've said, okay, this is what I want to achieve here. You're being really, really clear. Then perhaps I would say to you, you know, go and ask for recommendations from your peers of who you could work with or Google it or, or look at, people who may be a few steps ahead of you in your business and you want to actually aim that your objective is to get to that point in your business. Ask who they've worked with. I did this when I was, and it was a really good piece of advice that I got uh, very early on in my business, which was, Fanola, you know, you're interested in developing an online course. And I was looking at learning management systems and platforms. And a really good piece of advice that I got from someone was, look at the best in the market and see what they're using. So that always helps in whatever investment. Look at who's where you want to be and see what they use, who they use, what courses they've done, all of that. And use that as a starting point to figure out how you make that choice, okay? Then, after you've done that, go and check these people out. Check these courses out. Do your due diligence. <coughs> Excuse me. Really figure out, like, look at their website, look at their LinkedIn profile, look at the testimonials that are written. Are they testimonials that are, you know, a Google testimonial, a Google recommendation or LinkedIn testimonial recommendation? Because when they're done through a third party platform, it means that that person has to physically sit down and write it. It can't be written by anybody else. So it's a true testimonial or a true recommendation. And look at it, a few of them. Then if, you, if you're investing a lot of money, if you're investing a small amount of money, I'm not sure I go through the hassle of seeking, you know, speaking to people to verify the recommendations. But I would look at, uh, I would, if I was investing a lot of money, I'd want to talk to someone who's worked with them already. Like really check them out. Do your due diligence. Give it fair investment of your time and energy so that you know that you're making the right, check, right choice. The other thing I'd say to you is really important. Do a discovery call with them. If you're going to work with these people, you've got to like them. You've got, there has to be a resonance and you have to have a conversation of how can we work together? How does this, how does this feel to work together? Do we kind of, are we having a bit of crack on this call? Are we, you know, is what that person saying makes sense? Is there chemistry between you that you know that you could sit together and work together over the defined period of time? Also, when you talk to them about what you're wanting and what your objectives are for this engagement, how are they responding? What are they doing? You know, what are they doing to kind of meet you where you're at and make sure that you have a unique experience with them? And does it make sense to you when they speak? Does it make sense that you're going to get to where you want to go based on that conversation? This is all due diligence work. You'll know by gut as well. 
And you'll know by having done all of this other work beforehand to make sure that there is clarity here, that there is chemistry here, that we both know what we want to achieve here, okay? So do the checking out piece. Do the thing of, here is my due diligence piece. Another thing I would say to you is really, really important. And I notice that when I'm working with clients, I always know what stage someone is at in their business because they'll ask this question of, and what's involved in this relationship, Fanola? You know, so hey, back to this idea of put it in your calendar, okay? So when you've agreed that you're going to work together, ask the person that you're going to work with, what's involved here? How many times will we meet? How long will these sessions be? And also what kind of work do I have to do in advance to actually make sure that I make the most of every time that we meet? Or if it's a course that you're signing up for or a tribe that you're joining, what's involved and diary it. If you don't diary it, it doesn't get done. Because if you're as busy as me, you have to diary all this stuff to make sure that you make the most of it. So absolutely schedule not just the meetings, schedule the prep work that you have to do or the thinking work that you have to do before you meet or for the course or as part of the tribe to be a fully fledged member of this community you're joining that also has to have an objective, okay? The other thing that I would say to you is, and I see this quite a lot, it's this idea of you, I would reassure you that you know your business. You know the stage you're at at your business. If you are moved along further into your business and maybe you're going to a leveling up stage, but you know your customers, you have some business acumen, you have experienced some stuff. And it's back to this idea of, it didn't feel like me or it didn't resonate. What I would say to you is think of this idea of collaborate, don't abdicate. So when you're engaging with someone, don't hand all your power over to that other person. Think of it as a co-creative relationship. When you think of it as a co-creative relationship, so much more happens. So much more magic happens. You start to color outside the lines. I mean, I always have a scope of works when I'm working with someone, but I always like to color outside the lines because if I can give a richer, deeper, more impactful experience to a client, then I will. Because you know what? It's better for them. They get better results. And I have a richer experience and I have a, I get a kick out of it, you know? So your mentor or advisor should also be thinking about that. So if it's best, I think, from my perspective, it's always best if it's co-creative. And then you're never saying to yourself, well, this doesn't feel like me. Because if it's collaborative, it will always feel like you. Okay, I'll couch that for a second. And I say, well, maybe you're in a relationship where it is that advisor relationship where you are receiving information, but I'm skeptical. I don't think that's a productive way of working. But use your voice. If it's not resonating, say something. Say, this, does, this is not going to work for me. And I'll tell you why. And have a really good, positive conversation around that. And if it's a course that you're on, and you'll say, I would reach out to the course builder and say, this is not really working for me because of X, Y, and Z. And I bet you, I bet you that that course creator will come back to you and say, you know, if you did it like this, it would work then because they know their stuff. And if they don't come back to you and want to make sure that you have this really positive experience, that also tells you something. I know if someone came back to me and said, I'm not quite sure about this part of the course, don't know how to apply it. It's why comments are so important for me on each of the modules in my program because I, I actively respond to every comment to show them how to apply it to their business when it's the evergreen version of it and they're doing it themselves. So use your voice, collaborate, don't abdicate. Don't remove yourself from the relationship in a way that then you back out and say, this didn't work for me. So you're starting with this process of being clear that this is an investment. You're figuring out what you want to accomplish with it. You're sharing that with the person that you're potentially doing business with. And you're making sure that you do your due diligence and that there's chemistry and you're working together. And you are collaborating, not abdicating. This is a joint initiative together. These concepts apply, or these ways of looking at stuff apply whether it's a course, a community, 
our one-to-one marketing, our one-to-one mentoring relationship. Get in the game, I would say. Get in the game and choose. And that's at every stage because then you won't choose the wrong person because you're making sure from the very beginning that they're right for you and that you're in the game with them. Love to know your thoughts on that. It's kind of an interesting space and an interesting question to ask because I know I hear it a lot. I'll just say that to you. So comment below, share your experiences. If you have questions or you want to DM me about maybe a difficult situation. And I've had, I'll share this other story with you. I've had a relationship with a client I was working with a while ago and it wasn't working. Just wasn't working. I wasn't feeling it. It wasn't one of my kind of key things to think about in my business is if it's not joyful for me, if I don't enjoy the engagement, then I don't do the engagement. I don't, I do my own due diligence for, for working with clients. If I feel I can work with these people, I'll work with them. If I don't feel I like I can work with them, I don't. If there's no joy there, I don't work with them. But in this particular situation, I, it wasn't working. Like I did all my due diligence of, and this is, I'm the advisor here, right? Did all my due diligence, make sure I could work with them. They did their due diligence on me. It just, just the vibe wasn't there. And what ended up happening is I actually just rang them and I said, it's not, it's just not working. I just don't feel I'm doing my best or giving my best here. And this client said to me, you know, I feel the same way. We feel the same way, Finola. We don't feel we're showing you our best. And we talked about it and we talked about it and we said, you know what? Let's get off Zoom and let's do it in person. And we ended up not having kind of two one hour sessions or whatever it was. We ended up going to a hotel and we worked together for most of a day together. And what came out of that because we were in person, just it was the way it worked. It was just magical. We had such a productive, powerful session that was long, you know? So we got off Zoom. We found a way and we found a way because we talked to each other. I'll leave you with that note. I hope you have a great day. Make the most of it. Go for a walk. Because <laughs> I can't walk at the moment, so I'll be jealous. Go for a walk. Have a great day. Thank you for coming back to Ask Finola How. Here we are again. That was episode 61. Take care.